we will now discuss uh, the transport of another respiratory gas that is carbon dioxide. We have already talked of oxygen getting transported. Carbon dioxide is produced at the tissue level and then it is to be transported so that it can be thrown out when we breathe out, that is during exhalation. It is transported by plasma as well as RBC, that is with hemoglobin. deciliter of blood that is 100 milliliters of blood transports 3.7 milliliters of carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide gets transported in three forms. Transported as the first form in which this carbon dioxide would get transported is as carbonic acid. And this transport is through plasma, but actually this carbonic acid is formed inside the RBC. So carbon dioxide which is uh, coming out of the tissues reacts with water and in presence of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase and this carbonic anhydrase is a zinc activated enzyme. So here zinc ions are required for activation of this enzyme. We get carbonic acid and this carbonic acid then comes into the plasma and that is how it gets transported. Now as carbonic acid, the amount of uh, carbon dioxide which gets transported is 7% of carbon dioxide goes as carbonic acid. And it is the same fraction which is responsible for the carbon dioxide tension in the blood. So it is the same fraction which is responsible for that carbon dioxide tension in blood. Now out of 3.7 milliliters, only 0.3 milliliter goes as carbonic acid. That means the total carbon dioxide which is transported by 100 milliliters of blood is 3.7 milliliters out of which only 0.3 milliliter goes as carbonic acid. And if we talk in percentage, then 7% is transported as carbonic acid. The thing that we have to remember is that this reaction is taking place in RBC. This reaction, it takes place in RBC. But the carbonic acid which is formed comes out in the plasma and is transported in plasma as dissolved carbon dioxide. The second form in which carbon dioxide is transported is as bicarbonate of sodium and potassium. This is the maximum part. 70% of CO2, carbon dioxide, is transported as the same, that is bicarbonates of sodium and potassium. Now, what exactly happens here is, the reaction is taking place in RBC. So, if we draw RBC, then this membrane of RBC is known as Donnan's membrane. And in this, the reaction takes place. Carbon dioxide from the tissue 
diffuses into RBC. Here it reacts with water molecule and same in presence of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase in presence of zinc ions carbonic acid is formed. This carbonic acid it dissociates into H plus ions that is protons and bicarbonate ions. The bicarbonate ions they diffuse into the plasma. Now they are diffused but it is a carrier mediated transport. So here we will write carrier mediated transport. And that is done by the proteins which are present in this adonance membrane. These proteins are known as bicarbonate chloride uh, transport or carrier proteins. So the name of the protein here is bicarbonate chloride carrier proteins. These proteins help. And here we have added chloride also. Now these bicarbonates, when they diffuse out, these are negatively charged uh, ions. So if more of negatively charged particles or ions move out, it is going to disturb the ionic balance in the blood. And that is why to counter it, whatever number of bicarbonates go out, equal number of chloride ions are pumped in so that the balance of ions is maintained. So one more time what is happening here is carbon dioxide from the tissue diffuses into the RBCs. Here it reacts with water in presence of carbonic anhydrase which is again a zinc activated enzyme. Carbonic acid is formed. This carbonic acid dissociates. Now the condition which is required for its dissociation is low PO2, low partial pressure of oxygen and we know at the tissue level uh, partial pressure of oxygen is very low. So this is at tissue level. This carbonic acid dissociates into H plus and bicarbonate ions. Bicarbonate ions they are pumped out in exchange of chloride ions. Now why this exchange is required? If 100 bicarbonate ions come out, then there would be more concentration of negatively charged ions here, which would disturb the balance. So, to maintain the balance, equal number of chloride ions from the plasma would diffuse into the RBCs. So, bicarbonate ions are coming out and chloride ions are going in. And this is done by carrier proteins. These proteins are known as bicarbonate chloride carrier proteins. They move two ions in opposite directions. Bicarbonate going out that is from RBC to plasma and chloride ions going from plasma to RBC. This movement of chloride ions in is known as chloride shift. It is also called hamburger shift or hamburger's effect. Hamburger's shift or effect. And the purpose of this is to maintain the ionic balance in the blood. So this is the major part in which carbon dioxide gets transported. That is in the form of bicarbonate ions. Now when these bicarbonate ions come out, what happens to these bicarbonate ions is they react with sodium ions or chloride ions. That means bicarbonate is formed inside the RBC, but sodium bicarbonate or potassium bicarbonate is formed only in plasma. The reason is the dominance membrane is impermeable to sodium ions and potassium ions. So here 
it will either combine with sodium ions to form sodium bicarbonate or with potassium ions to form potassium bicarbonate and these are the two forms in which maximum carbon dioxide is <coughs> transported. So when we say bicarbonates of sodium and potassium, they are formed in the plasma. Bicarbonate ions from the RBC come out and here they react with sodium ions and potassium ions. So these are two ways in which carbon dioxide is getting transported. One is carbonic acid, second is as bicarbonates of sodium and potassium. Now we will take the third method in which it binds with hemoglobin and gets transported. So we have seen the two ways in which carbon dioxide gets transported. First one was as carbonic acid and the second one was as bicarbonate of sodium and potassium. We have seen the detailed process. Now let us talk about the third method in which this carbon dioxide gets transported. It gets transported as carb amino hemoglobin. Carb amino hemoglobin is a temporary or a short lived complex and 23% of CO2 gets transported as carbamino hemoglobin. Here, carbon dioxide binds with the amino group of hemoglobin molecule and the complex which is formed is known as carbamino hemoglobin. This is how it gets transported. So we have seen three forms in which carbon dioxide is getting transported. As carbonic acid that is 7%, bicarbonate ions that is 70% and this is 23%. So three forms the major is as bicarbonates. So both the respiratory gases, they get transported from the alveoli, the oxygen has to be transported to the tissues where it is going to be utilized and carbon dioxide which is produced at the tissue level has to be transported from tissues to the alveoli so that it can be exhaled out. After understanding the transport of both the respiratory gases, we will uh, discuss about certain important terms or certain important parameters related to this transport. But before that, we also need to understand one more gas which gets transported along with hemoglobin. Now, this is a poisonous thing. So we are talking about transport of carbon monoxide. Now actually when we are using the word transport, it is either we want to use it or it has to be exhaled. Carbon monoxide is produced whenever there is incomplete combustion of carbon compounds. And hemoglobin has a very high affinity towards carbon monoxide. So hemoglobin has 200 times more affinity towards carbon monoxide and it binds with hemoglobin molecule to form a complex that is called carboxy hemoglobin. Carboxy hemoglobin is a permanent complex. That means if one hemoglobin is attached to this carbon monoxide, then that hemoglobin is always going to be blocked. It will never be freed up 
to carry any other respiratory gas. Whereas in case of carbon dioxide binding with hemoglobin, that is carbamino hemoglobin and oxygen binding with hemoglobin, that is oxyhemoglobin, both are temporary complexes and they dissociate. That means the reactions which take place are reversible. Here, it is an irreversible reaction. Hemoglobin will get permanently attached to carbon monoxide or in other words, it would get blocked. And this condition leads to what we call carbon monoxide poisoning. In carbon monoxide poisoning, the amount of oxygen reaching the tissues would be less. Reason is hemoglobin content is getting reduced slowly because every time some carbon monoxide is going to bind with hemoglobin. So this is uh, another category and when we talk of respiratory gases we need to understand how carbon dioxide and oxygen get transported. So now in the next segment we'll talk about certain other uh, parameters like oxygen dissociation curves and all.